Star Wars Celebration 2022, the event we've waited three years for. The event that brings fans from across the world to celebrate the franchise we all love. If you're unfamiliar with the event, Star Wars Celebration is a convention that entails all things Star Wars. It's pretty much Comic Con, but for Star Wars. New shows, movies, books, and all other media and merchandise are announced and discussed at various panels. You can also buy all the merch your heart desires on the showroom floor where licensed companies and independent vendors sell statues, toys, plushies, art, and much, much more. The main panels of the event are usually held in the morning about an hour after the doors open. Unfortunately, not everybody is able to get into these panels as a lottery system is used to determine if you get a spot. Personally, I got into the Lucasfilm Showcase on the main stage and into the, the Mandalorian panel on another stage where they live stream the panel. The big panels have many of the actors and Lucasfilm executives as guests, such as Hayden Christensen, Rosario Dawson, Dave Filoni, and Kathleen Kennedy. These panels also release exclusive footage that is only shown to people in attendance to that panel. Exclusive trailers for The Mandalorian, Ahsoka, Tales of the Jedi, and a special version of the Bad Batch trailer were shown this year at their respective panels. Some of the actors even have their own panels where they talk about their careers and even have a Q&A session at the very end. I went to Ian McDermott's panel and had a great time. He even recited some of the movie lines in his infamous Palpatine voice. Other than the big panels, the event also includes other smaller panels that run till the event closes for the day. There's a cosplay competition, a Lucasfilm publishing panel, a design and concept art panel, and so many other various types. These smaller panels don't require the lottery system and are first come, first serve. The showroom floor is basically sensory overload. There are so many vendors and showcase items to look through and admire. You can also catch people wearing their awesome cosplay costumes walking around. A lot of the items selling are collectibles, but there is a huge variety in what you can buy. My favorite booth was definitely sideshows. The people in that company are so talented. There is also an art gallery where so many different talented artists display their work there. And of course, all the art you see is available to buy. If you're looking to get a tattoo, the event also has their own tattoo parlor with various certified artists. I'm not sure if that they take walk-ins, but you would usually have to contact an artist before the event to make an appointment. A list of all these artists and vendors is posted on the Celebration website beforehand so you can get some sort of idea what to expect. There's also a section of the exhibit hall that is dedicated to taking pictures with certain characters and sets. My favorite set they had was the Emperor's Throne with Darth Vader and Stormtroopers standing by your side. Next to these sets is the Star Wars Celebration live stage. This is where the live stream of the event mostly revolves around. It's basically a stage hosted by the Star Wars show hosts who interview the different cast and executive members. It's a great experience to be there as you can get really close to the actors. I'll never forget Hayden ending his interview by saying, this is where the fun begins right before the Kenobi premiere. They also give away free merch. All right. Well, we are just hours away from people being able to see this. Is there anything you want the fans to know or any last thing you want to say to them before we get to see this series tonight? This is where the fun begins. Yeah! <laughs> The Celebration Store is where you can get all the merch you want by Lucasfilm that's exclusive to the convention. They have t-shirts, mugs, pool floaties, plushies, Beskar coasters, ice cream machine coolers, and so much more. Be prepared to wait in line for a while to get in as it took hours sometimes for some people to get in. Though these lines will be much shorter if you wait till the later days of the convention. <laughs> For an extra price, you can take a picture or get an autograph from one of the actors or authors from the Star Wars universe. The price depends on who the actor or author is. I paid close to $150 for a picture with Ian McDermott and $60 for an autograph from Sam Witwer. The picture is a fun but very quick experience. 
you get a quick hello from the actor, pose, take the picture, and then a quick goodbye. The whole experience is probably close to 10 seconds or less. You get a bit more time when you opt for an autograph though, and you get a chance to have a small conversation with the actor or author. I got to ask Sam Witwer a lore question about Maul, and it was awesome to hear his response. You have two options when it comes to food at the convention. At Anaheim 2022, you could either buy food from inside the convention or from a variety of food trucks outside the exhibit hall. The food from the food trucks was usually much better than the food from inside. They pretty much have everything a food truck would have, from burgers, tacos, burritos, pizza, Chinese food, ice cream, and more. Overall, I had such an awesome experience at Star Wars Celebration. I really got to relive my childhood that weekend. Seeing Hayden and Ewan in person almost brought tears to my eyes. These characters mean so much to all of us, and seeing all the people that brought them to life is such a great and humbling experience. You can tell a lot of passion and love goes into this event. I can't wait for Celebration in London next year, and I really hope I get the chance to go. Though for next year, I hope they make a few tweaks to make the experience better for the fans and the employees working at the event. I felt as if the event was somewhat disorganized and understaffed. On occasion, I had a hard time telling what line was for what, and I would also see people crowding around one employee asking question after question, and I felt bad because I could see the employee would get overwhelmed. There was also an instance when I was waiting in line with, with friends for the Attack of the Clones anniversary panel. An employee told us that the panel was full and to get out of line, but right as we got out, they proceeded to let the line in. I still ended up getting into the panel, but that was a bit frustrating. The whole process to get in line for a picture with an actor was also a bit of a mess, and we had no idea what was going on until 15 minutes after my reserved time slot. The Celebration store also looked like the ransacked Black Friday store every time I went. It was a bit messy and disorganized. I also hope they stream the main panels for the people who aren't able to make it next year. I know there was a lot of discourse among the fans about this and I feel their frustrations. Although the things I mentioned here were a bit detracting, they didn't take away from the experience of the convention at all. If you're a casual or hardcore fan, I definitely recommend going to London next year if you have the chance. It's a magical experience. Anyways, thanks so much for watching and leave a comment down below if you have any questions about the event and I'll be happy to answer them. I hope you have a great day and may the force be with you.